Okay, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whenever you're watching this. Uh, this is for Religion 325, Religion in America. Of course, it's being taught spring 2021, and I am Dr. Ted Booth, your professor. And since we are beginning the first couple of weeks online, I wanted to record some videos of some things that I would possibly be saying in class if we were all together. Uh, so what I would like you to do is if you could maybe pause the video for a second and go to the blackboard and download your syllabus under the link that has syllabus. So go ahead and do that. Pause the video and then I will take a couple of seconds here and then I will get back to the syllabus. Okay, hopefully you have uh, downloaded the syllabus or uploaded the syllabus and you're looking at it. Uh, once again, this is Religion 325. We are going to primarily be meeting when we meet in person in the Biz Ed building, 930 to 1045, Tuesday and Thursday. Uh, until that time, I'm just going to record some lectures and I'm not going to record them concurrent so you can watch them whenever or email me questions or that kind of thing. But please keep up with the assignments. So Biz Ed 114, 930 to 1045, Tuesday and Thursday when we can meet. Um, we will have some recommended text for the class. Meacham, John Meacham's American Gospel. We'll be reading that and we'll be writing a book review on it. And I have some instructions online under uh, learning units about how to write a book review. Um, it's a very interesting book about the role of religion in America politics. Uh, also will be uh, our, our next book is by a guy named Gosted, uh, Religious History of America, and we'll be reading that a little bit at a time. Uh, I have some recommended uh, uh, books on there. It's called Down in the Valley, an Introduction to African American Religious History. Uh, we are gonna also talk about Native American religious history. We are gonna talk about other religious traditions other than simply Christianity. But for this class, it's gonna kind of be like a history of the religious process in America. We're going to, and it's primarily going to focus on Christianity, as you can imagine, because that has been the primary influencer within um, American history and American politics. However, it is not the only, so I'm going to try my best uh, to uh, weave in the other traditions as well and give them their due. Uh, if you look on page two of the syllabus, uh, some of the course requirements. We're going to have four exams, a final exam, a book review, a research paper, and then class attendance and participation. If you're an athlete, if mom or dad is sick, or somebody, God forbid, somebody gets COVID, please let me know. Uh, I am very understanding, but I, I need to know these things, and uh, I don't want to have to take off uh, points for that. Um, also, usually, if you miss more than eight classes, uh, you automatically fail. Now, in this day and age of virtual learning, I, I'm going to try to be as, as uh, understanding as possible on that. Uh, but uh, try your best to watch the videos and to also, um, when we meet in class, meet in class. Because we're going to and meet in class with informed participation. It would be great if you could read, you know, the assignment so we could discuss it. Because part of what I want us to do is not only just demonstrate our learning on exams, but also demonstrate our learning through interactions in the class, through how we talk to one another, what we say to one another, that kind of thing. Uh, the research paper is going to be on some aspect of American history, uh, of American religious history. Let me, let me get that to that in just a second. So uh, incompletes will only be given in extreme circumstances if, if you have a problem, um, but I, I try my best to, to be mindful. Um, so uh, if you need an incomplete uh, due to somebody's sickness, uh, due to somebody, uh, something like that, please let me know. That will be probably more toward the end of the semester. Uh, your research paper will be on a topic dealing with the history of religion in America that you either find interesting or perhaps we didn't cover. It can be anything you want to, but it has to be at least a five-page typed paper based on at least four academic sources. You can use your book as one. Um, you cannot use your Wikipedia. Uh, you must format the paper in a style such as APA, MLA, or Chicago if you need help with that. Uh, if you look on Blackboard where it says um, uh, Tutor Me, we have a writing lab where we can submit things, and I'll talk about that later in the semester. 
It's over to the far left on Blackboard. Um, also, you can go to the librarians, and they can help you with that. Uh, you must use in-text citations. These are little things that look like uh, parentheses with like booth, per, comma, 1995, comma, page 5, parentheses. It shows where you got your information. You can't just have a whole huge paper and not document in, in, in the paper where you got the information. Uh, I've had papers turned in before where you would have five pages of text with no kind of citations and then a bibliography. Well, that just doesn't work in an academic setting. Technically, that leans toward plagiarism. So make sure that if you have questions about citations that you ask me and I will have a sample APA paper online for you to look at so you can go, oh, that's what it looks like. I'll also have an APA cheat sheet online for you to look at. So there shouldn't be any problems. Uh, so um, there will be a rubric for the paper, uh, which is included in the syllabus, which just kind of shows you how I grade it. Because at LMU these days, we're all about transparent instruction, which means um, I just don't give you a grade and you're like, have no idea how I came up with it. it sounds like a revolutionary concept, doesn't it? Uh, so I try, I'm going to try to follow the rubric Give so many points for this, so many points for that, so many points for this. Uh, and hopefully it will be as transparent as possible. And this, the, the purpose of the, the research paper will be to allow you to explore something that maybe piques your interest. Uh, we've had everything from people write on Scientology, people write on snake handling churches, people do the, all kinds of interesting things about religion in America. And... Uh, also, uh, there will probably be an in-class presentation where we present our research to others and we ask questions about it and we just tell them what we learned. Uh, the book review will be about a two and a half page book review. Again, I will have uh, some um, helpful hints on how to do this, but you will need to discuss the author's thesis, which is his argument. What argument is John Meacham trying to make in that book? His use of his sources. Is he convincing? Did you not just like the book? Did you kind of think, hey, you know, John Meacham made a pretty good point about some things? Or, no, there was one point that I didn't think he really got onto that that well. Stuff like that. Uh, we have a policy for makeup or late work. Please try to get to me as soon as possible if you get behind. Um, let's see... Last day to add classes is January the 20th. If you need help adding a class and I'm not your advisors, ask me anyway. I can fix it. Uh, last day to drop a course without a WD is February the 8th. Very important. Last day to drop a course without an F is March the 12th. Really important. Um, so pay attention to that. If you need any kind of academic support, uh, I am the director of academic support as well, and I will help you with that. We have... Uh, uh, tutoring that we can offer online uh, and if you have any questions just email me and I will get you set with that if you need any kind of counseling if um, you're worried about um, uh, maybe in high school you had a, a um, 504 I think it might be called uh, where you needed more time or you needed extra something or accommodations uh, we have the office of ada through dan graves dr dan graves please check with him um, uh, we don't allow any kind of harassment or discrimination well we don't and we report those things to the title nine office hazing is not allowed on campus that's that old thing that old schools used to do a long time ago but uh we're not trying to put anybody in any kind of weird um, uh, situation for any kind of reason. Um, it's strictly prohibited. Uh, we will do course evaluations at the end where you get your chance to say, hey, I thought the professor did this well, or I thought the professor could have done this better, or something like that. Um, If we have any kind of snow days, we are now able to go online so easily since we've learned how to do it. So we won't miss time and uh, everybody will be safe. So that should be okay. Um, so if we look at um, right now, um, 
the first part, we have looked at the syllabus. If we look at Tuesday, January the 12th, which is when I guess this class is due, even though I'm recording a little bit early, we're going to talk about the syllabus. So think about this for a half second. If you have any questions about the syllabus, email me. I can't take, I'm not doing this live, so I can't take questions right now. Uh, and then I also want to look at a couple of documents that are in your Blackboard uh, learning unit. It's called How to Read a Primary Source, How to Read a Secondary Source, and some of the other things. So I'm going to pause this just real quick, give you a chance to get those up. It's under learning units, and then we will go over that together. Okay, we should be back. Uh, we're going to talk about primary sources. The, the article online was Primary Sources, Why Read Them and How to Use Them in World History. Now, this isn't world history, but I'm applying it to the idea of religion in America because we want to look at how religion came to America, how religion was already here in America. Don't forget the Native Americans. They had their own views of God and, and the cosmos and the creation, and we're going to look at some of those because they're very interesting and very telling, and we need to preserve that as well. Then we're going to look at the folks who came here, some seeking religious freedom, some others for other reasons, some coming totally a-religious. But uh, we're going to find primary sources. And primary sources, by and large, are things that are um, from the time period. A primary source might be something like, it could even be uh, uh, a rock that somebody carved something on because they carved it on at the time they lived. So some of the primary sources that we're going to look at, like if you think about American history, something like the Mayflower, Mayflower Compact might be a primary source. Um, something uh, that someone would, would have wrote, if you look at the, the history of the Salem witch trials, the um, notes from the judicial proceedings would be a primary source because they are contemporary with the events they're describing. Someone's personal diary, you know, hey, I went out today and I saw this, this, and this. You know, if you're looking at Daniel Boone, that would be a primary source. Now, if you're looking 150 years later, somebody writing a book on Daniel Boone, that's a secondary source. So it's not that it's necessarily bad, but it's got a little bit of distance and it's trying to put things together. So primary sources, though, are the things that are contemporary with the time period that we're studying. When uh, you look on this little article, uh, you know, one of the questions it asks, number one, is what does the source say and what genre is the source? Um, so what, what's the source trying to say to you when you look at it? And what genre does it mean? Is it, is, is it a, a typical style that needs to be understood? For instance, if you're a reading a highly symbolic source or maybe a work of science fiction or... Um, somebody who's attesting to be religious history versus secular history. Because what you always got to look for in any kind of source is what's called a bias. And we all have biases. You know, uh, if you love America and then you decide to write a textbook on America, you're going to have a, a bias that you love America. But in order to write a good source on it, you have to be aware of that and let it not affect you. Write the good and the bad. Well, sometimes when we look back at history and we look at the history of religion in America, we're going to find some primary sources where they they were totally biased. You know, especially I mentioned the Salem witch trials. If you look at some of those things, if you look at some of the things that the Puritans wrote, they're going to have their own particular idea about how they believed and what was right and what was wrong. And these other people aren't, you know, they're, they're not going to necessarily have any kind of consideration for them. So in a primary source, it's always good to know what its genre is and what does the source try to say. Also, who wrote the text? Some texts are anonymous, but if you know who wrote the text, sometimes it's a little bit easier to figure out, does this guy have an idea behind what he's writing? You know, does he have an ax to grind or maybe he's trying to make the other guy look good? You know, and uh, so always know who wrote the text. Where does it come from? Um uh, what geographic origin of the source? What culture? Um, when was it created? And when was it written down? Why was the source created and why was it finally written down? These are very important questions to look at with a, a, a primary source. And um, it goes through uh, 10 questions here, and I'll keep going through them all. I don't mean to read you something that you can read yourself. But... Um, Question six, what does the source say and what genre is the source? We looked at that. Who wrote the text? Where does the source come from? When was the document created and when was it written down? 
And why was it written down? Seems like some of those um, um, questions repeat themselves a little bit, but it's always good to look at it. So with primary sources, the main thing I want you to get from this is that they are contemporary with the events they describe. You know, if you're talking about the American Civil War and you read a Civil War diary, that is a primary source. If you're talking about the American Civil War and you can read a newspaper article about a battle, that could be a primary source. It could also be a secondary source if it's written maybe two or three weeks after the battle and it's based upon things that aren't eyewitness testimony. So, okay, let's go on to how, uh, what are secondary sources and how are they important? Okay, hopefully we all have up the little um, um, article thing on how to read a secondary source. And remember that this secondary source is written usually after events have occurred. It's based on original research, you know, but it's not necessarily contempor contemporary of the events that it's talking about. Um, there's some tips there about reading the title, reading the book from the outside in. I had a professor in graduate school who would always say the first thing you do when you read a book, and it's an academic book, not necessarily a Harry Potter book, but if you're going to read an academic book, read the first chapter and then the last chapter and then read. You know, that, that could help, but um, the, one of the first things you always want to do in a secondary source is find out what is the author trying to argue. Because people just don't write books to write books when it's in the academic world. They want to make a point. And usually you can find the thesis, which is what it's called, the argument, in the first couple of pages of the book, in the first chapter or introduction. And usually it starts out saying something like, I hope to prove in this book that, or I will demonstrate by an effective description of the sources that, something like that. It's very, very uh, prominent usually. And then the rest of the book goes about trying to make the author's case. Uh, for instance, I wrote a book on Queen Elizabeth I, and I thought that Queen Elizabeth used her education to project a powerful image so people of her time couldn't criticize her for being a woman. Because back when she was queen, uh, they wanted queens to get married and have kings. So every time Queen Elizabeth was criticized, she would come back with this powerful response showing how educated she was and how qualified she was to be queen. And so I would state my thesis in the introduction and then throughout the rest of the book, what I would do is try to um, prove it. And so our job as people who read books is to see how well the person did it. And no matter who you are, you're probably not going to do um, 100% on everybody. Sometimes people like to take notes underline things, that kind of thing. Um, I will say this to you. Psychological studies have shown, believe it or not, that if you hand write down your notes when you're reading something, that you are more apt to remember it than if you type it. If you're sitting there by a book and you're typing all your stuff while you're reading, typing can, can become such second nature that we don't even know what we typed. And um, so I would encourage you to use the old fashioned method of handwriting your notes. Now, if you want to retype them later, that's fine. But handwriting notes, I guarantee you, you will remember them better. Um, talks a little bit about uh, what's called stamp, uh, structure, thesis, argument, motives, primaries. Um, and three important questions. And I'll let you look at that yourself. Three important questions to ask of secondary sources. What does the author say? Why does he say it? And is the author's argument weak or vulnerable somewhere? You know, nobody's perfect. He might have a few little areas. Now, if he's if he's worth if he or she is worth her weight, they will admit, I know that it seems a little sketchy in this area, but this is still what I think. Uh, but we still all miss that sometimes. We're all human. All authors are human. So uh, when you're reading through a secondary source, we have to don't just take it as the gospel. You know, it can be written for many reasons. It can be written for it can have a huge amount of bias in it. Uh, and so um, we always want to look for that. Um, so uh, now what I'm going to do is take a second and pause it and let you get the APA information out. And then uh, we'll talk discuss that. Okay, hopefully you have the APA cheat sheet in front of you. Uh, I borrowed this from another university. Um, 
but uh, this shows you about citing books, uh, how to do it, and this is all about um, how to do certain things, how to cite print journal magazines, electronic journals, internet sources, podcasts, and then it talks about in-text citation on page four. That is very important. And um, reference list, and it shows you an example of a reference list uh, of how to do this. And this is from Kent State University Library is where I got it actually on the back. So I make sure to cite my sources. And I did just notice that I do not have yet the APA sample paper uploaded. So by the time you see this video, it should be uploaded. And it'll just give you an idea about how to do a title page, how to do a reference page, what it looks like, how often people cite sources. I'll tell you what, the best thing in the world when you're ever trying to do a project is look at somebody else's project who's already done it. Even if it's on something totally different than yours, you say, oh, I see how he did this or she did that or something like that. So that always helps. So uh, today is pretty much a short lecture day. Um, and it probably will be because uh, when I don't have people in the class, I guess I probably run out of things to say. But I'm very excited about this class. I really love this class. I think it's a great class to talk about things. I will try to make it as non-horrible as possible, if that's a word because um, some people don't like history and then they're like, oh my gosh, now it's religion and history thrown in together and I, I thought it was a religious course and now it's a history course. We're going to try to talk about as best we can practical understanding of how religion interacts with America, culture, politics, economics, all kinds of things. Because whether or not you are a religious person or not a religious person, religion has a major impact in American society and it always has. And um, so we need to look at that and see what we can learn from it, see what we can do better in the future. And uh, so if you have any questions about this first thing that I've uh, recorded here, uh, Lord willing, I'll be able to figure out the Internet and make it work. Um, let me know. And I look forward to hopefully seeing you guys in person really soon. And I will post these videos in the announcements. Uh, so I will post Thursday's video uh, either Wednesday or Thursday, just depending on how quickly I can get things done. Uh, I've had some internet problems at my house. So anyway, as I said, please email me if you have any questions at all. I'm excited about uh, getting to know you all and I will see you soon.